with uh, a couple of very interesting individuals here today. Um, uh, we are in Delhi right now and uh, I am with uh, Craig and I am with Paul. Craig and Paul are in the development sector uh, and uh, they have done some very interesting things with the Global Fund and with TV. And uh, I just want to talk a little bit more about that uh, 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 with you folks. Could we just start off with the Global Fund? Global Fund is amongst the biggest funds in the world. Uh, it has put together something like $27 billion under its umbrella. And I think Craig has got a very interesting story to tell about how it actually all started. Yeah, certainly. Well, the Global Fund didn't just, just come out of anywhere. Okay, Kofi Annan in 2001 uh, made news by calling for a global AIDS war chest mm -hmm. of $10 billion a year. Okay. And everybody thought that he suddenly woke up one day and said, let's do it. Actually, it took at least three years of planning, mostly on the WHO side, uh, to put the conditions in place that he would make that announcement. And so initially, we were working on this as a, a grant proposal for another potential donor. Mm -hmm. Okay, And we were thinking, let's get $100 million. Okay. But then suddenly an opportunity emerged, a political opportunity, in the G8, which was held in Okinawa in mm -hmm. 2000. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, the Japanese government wanted to make infectious diseases one of the top agenda items. Mm -hmm. Not only did they want to do that, but they wanted to have measurable goals, mm -hmm. which is unheard of for the G8, mm -hmm. to say that we're going to cut TB deaths in half, malaria deaths in half. Uh, but they did that, mm -hmm. and suddenly the political environment changed. There was suddenly new momentum, and the question became how to capitalize mm -hmm. on that. And so WHO spent a tremendous amount of energy, and I was in charge of the advocacy strategy mm -hmm. at the time for WHO, in trying to create the conditions for the creation of this global fund. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of jockeying, political, political jockeying, for being involved in this, even taking the leadership of mm -hmm. this, UNICEF, the World Bank, uh, other donors uh, saw themselves as even better suited mm -hmm. to lead the Global Fund. But everybody naturally thought, no, WHO wants to own this. Mm -hmm. Well, Gro Harlem Gretland, who was the Director General of WHO at that time, uh, the former uh, Prime Minister of Norway, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, uh, the leader of the first real meeting mm -hmm. for sustainable development, uh, was masterful mm -hmm. in saying, no, this will go nowhere if WHO makes it its own creation. Mm -hmm. And she masterfully handed the baton mm -hmm. to Kofi Annan okay. three years down the road and said, you make the announcement, you call everyone to join in, and that became make it the, work. Make huh. it work. Yeah. Brilliant. And that's how it became a juggernaut that sort of included $27 billion today. Eh? Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about the TV campaign. I mean, there were some fascinating insights for me when you were talking about that story earlier about how you chose TB and why TB became the rallying point around this. Do you want to talk a little bit more about why? Well, again, a lot of times uh, in advocacy, uh, it's not the plans you make, okay? It's, it's much like politics, mm -hmm. okay? Things change every day, every week. Uh, it's basically your success or failure is built on the quality of your people, your staff, mm -hmm. your ability to be lean and mean and nimble and to turn on a dime, mm -hmm. okay? And the conditions were all in place when these perfect storms in the early 1990s. Mm -hmm. where suddenly we had new data mm -hmm. showing that TB at that time was the leading infectious killer of people over five years of age. My goodness. We had a new report from the World Bank that showed that TB was almost as cost effective, TB control that is, cost effective as childhood vaccines. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then we had evidence that a program that would soon be known as DOTS mm -hmm. was actually doubling cure rates mm -hmm. among people that had TB. And all those things converged at the same time. Mm -hmm. And we suddenly had a new base of evidence mm -hmm. that we could campaign on. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that's what sort of took off. And uh, what was the result? I mean, obviously, TB has been, um, has it been halted on its tracks? Would you no, say it's that? it's a slow-moving disease. <laughs> okay? as, as a TB advocate, it's very frustrating. It could not be a, a, a more or a less media-friendly disease. Right. Uh, you uh, a road to death from the inside. It's uh -huh. not like Ebola where you see it externally. Uh -huh. uh, you uh, the, the process from uh, into the grave mm -hmm. is one of not days mm -hmm. but months mm -hmm. or years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not glamorous. Mm -hmm. If you're a celebrity, uh, you keep it hidden. You mm -hmm. don't talk about it. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So the challenges were enormous. I see. Okay, but the fact that TB was becoming drug resistant, mm -hmm. even multi-drug resistant, was really the single thing that got people's attention because that affected the more elite decision makers, mm -hmm. policy makers. Mm -hmm. And that obviously, you know, brought a lot more action orientation to the campaign, did it? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, and we have seen uh, what is called the DOTS program, mm -hmm. the program that, to control TB. Back in 1995, only 2% of all TB cases were being treated by DOTS. Mm -hmm. Now it's probably about 70% of the world's mm -hmm. cases. So it's remarkable. Okay. And TB deaths, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in all parts of the world except Africa are on the decline. It's mm -hmm. the same with infections. That's true. Mm -hmm. And that's an excellent segue into your specialty. Paul is somebody who has been quoted by over 100, uh, his research has been quoted by over 100 media publications around the world. Paul, talk about research and the importance that it played in the TB campaign. Yeah, one of the clearest examples I can think of is um, in the U.S. Global AIDS program. This huh. is the biggest public health program ever launched to fight a single disease in history. It was huh. launched by President George Bush in 2003. And it was meant to really catalyze uh, a, an effort against HIV in Africa where people were hit hardest by the disease. Except they were missing something, and that was addressing TB. Now, TB is the leading killer of people with AIDS in Africa. You know, many people have a TB infection, but oftentimes they don't get sick. Mm -hmm. But then when they get HIV, it destroys the immune system, and mm -hmm. that TB infection blossoms into an infectious disease. But that program, when it was launched, even though it was putting billions of dollars into AIDS, mm -hmm. didn't have any money that was going to address the number one killer of the people with, with HIV. Mm -hmm. So we, we made a report and we showed, you know, what are the benefits that you could have by just investing a little bit of that billion dollar package of money in screening people for TB and then providing them treatment. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, a lot of advocacy groups, they, they use research and they bang people over the head with it. And sometimes that's actually really useful. But in this case, we took a different approach, and we said these are the benefits that you can get. And we did the research, and we showed it to the U.S. government. And over time, they, they agreed. And the budget line within that, that big billion-dollar program for TBHIV went from zero dollars up to $160 million a year. Mm -hmm. Now, $160 million may not seem like a whole lot in the grand scheme of things, and they still need to go farther. But that money is really is saving lives by eliminating the number one killer of people with AIDS. Fantastic. I think that was clearly um, the impact of research, as it were, there. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, very, very exciting indeed. Um, the last question, really, to both of you. Um, um, uh, Craig, first you. Um, you know, the World Health Organization, the Global Fund, the World Bank, you've been associated with all these spaces. You know, you're in the development space. You live in Sao Paulo in Brazil. Exotic destination, folks. <laughs> uh, so what drives you? What motivates you? Well, strangely, I entered WHO having no health or medical or scientific background. Mm -hmm. I think in college or graduate school, I probably took one science-related class, and that was in quantum physics. Mm -hmm. and, and so suddenly I have to talk medical, medical ease. Yeah, I, I, I say, tell people I'm not a doctor, but I play one on television. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but soon you, you pick up the language, mm -hmm. uh, the jargon, fast enough and quick enough. And, and, uh, and my, my background was actually, I studied theology, of all things. Okay. Okay, and so a lot of the motivation was simply to help make the world a better place. Uh-huh. Yep. And Sao Paulo, well, my partner is Brazilian, and it was always a dream uh, to relocate to his uh, home country. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Brilliant. Paul, same question to you. So what drives you? What motivates you? Well, what in this situation, um, you know, TB is a very old disease. It's been around as for as old as humanity basically. Uh -huh. People think that it, it they, they can trace it back to the dawn of agriculture and there's evidence of TB in mummies. You know, so it's something that's plagued mankind forever. Um, but now it's, t it's coming down because we know how to treat it. Um, and it, if you if you make it come down basically at, a, at the rate it's coming down now, you speed it up a little bit, um, we can eliminate it in the course of our lifetime. So, you know, I can't think of a of a better thing if, if I'm retired and an old man looking back on my life to think I played a part in eliminating yeah. this disease Fantastic. that has impacted humanity, humanity from the dawn of time. Fantastic. Absolute pleasure talking to you gentlemen. Really good stuff. Rajiv, our pleasure. Thank you very much.